bear with me this morning, I'd like to give you a little bit of history of the, of the scouting program. Scouting history goes back to the turn of the 20th century to a British Army officer by the name of Robert Stevenson Smythe Baden Powell. While stationed in India, he discovered that his men did not know basic first aid or the elementary means of survival in the outdoors. Baden Powell realized he needed to teach his men frontier skills, so he wrote a small handbook called Aids to Scouting, which he emphasized resourcefulness, adaptability, and leadership. <coughs> After returning from war, Baden Powell was amazed to find that his little book had caught the attention of English boys. They were using it to play the game of scouting. Baden Powell had a vision to see new possibilities and decided to test his ideas on boys. In August of 1907, he gathered 20 boys, took them to Brown Sea Island off of the southern coast of England. There they set up a makeshift camp for the next 12 days. The boys had a great time. They divided into patrols and played games and went on hikes, learned stalking and pioneering. They learned to cook outdoors without utensils. Scouting began on the island and would sweep the globe in the next few years. The next year, Baden Powell published his book, Scouting for Boys, and scouting continued to grow. The same year, more than 10,000 Boy Scouts attended a rally held at the Crystal Palace, and two years later, the Boy Scouts had tripled. About that same time, the seeds of scouting was growing in the United States. On a farm in Connecticut, a naturalist and author named Ernest Thompson Seton was organizing a group of boys called the Woodcraft Indians and Daniel Carter Beard, an artist and writer, organized the Sons of Daniel Boone. These two organizations were similar, but they were not connected. The boys who belonged had never heard of Baden Powell or Boy Scouts, yet both groups were destined to become Boy Scouts one day soon. But first, an American businessman had to get lost in the fog in England. Chicago businessman and publisher William Boyce was groping his way through the fog when a boy appeared and offered to take him to his destination. When they arrived, Boyce tried to pay him, but the boy refused. He courteously explained that he was a scout and he could not take pay for a good turn. Intrigued, the publisher questioned the boy and learned more about scouting. He visited with Baden Powell and when he boarded his transatlantic steamer for home, he had a suitcase filled with information and ideas. And so on February 8, 1910, Boyce incorporated the Boy Scouts of America. The unknown scout who helped him in the fog was never heard of again. His good turn had brought scouting to this country. The first executive of scouting was James West a young man from Washington who had risen above tragic boyhood and physical disabilities to become a lawyer. He dedicated himself for 32 years to helping all children to have a better life. Scouting has grown in the United States from 2,000 Boy Scouts and leaders in 1910 to millions strong today. From a program of Boy Scouts only, it is spread to include Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, varsity scouts, and venturers. Back in England, younger boys who were eager to become Boy Scouts, and in 1914, Baden Powell began implementing a program for younger boys that was based on Rudyard, Kimpl Rudyard Kipling's The Jungle. The Wolf Cub program began in 1960, and since that time, wolf cubbing has spread to other European countries with very little change. In America, hundreds of Cub Scouting aged boys and their families were clamoring for prayer for a program for their own. In 1925, Dr. Hubert Hunt, a research psychologist and veteran scouter, did a study on boy rangers, boy pioneers, American eagles, and boys clubs 
he found that only 90, only 50 boys participated regularly in organized leisure time activities. He also found that young boys responded better to leadership and program efforts than older boys did. Advice was obtained from leading psychologists, sociologists, teachers, and school superintendents, education people, college executives, and recreation and welfare directors. And in 1930, Cub Scouting was formally launched with 5,102 boys registered at the end of the first year. Den mother registration was optional for the first few years. By June of 1938, 1,100 den mothers had registered and soon became an important part of Cub Scouting. The first dens met weekly at mothers' homes, where boys played games and enjoyed crafts and ceremonies. The pack met weekly, sometimes semi-monthly, for games, den competitions, awards, and activities. <coughs> Cubs advanced from Bobcat, which was all new members, to Wolf, age 9, Bear, age 10, then Lion, age 11, and, and then they joined the Boy Scout troop at age 12. I remember that when Henning came home from school with a scout application, and we took him to the American Legion to sign up. They asked us to help in the program. So we began our adult training. <coughs> I remember watching a video, and a lot of other scholars will too, that taught us how to be den leaders. <coughs> the woman was dressed in a yellow blouse, a blue skirt, her scout kerchief, and when she opened the door, Standing at her door were six or eight little boys. She quickly slammed the door, raised her face to the sky, and said, Oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> and I believe that that's the beginning of every scout leader's relationship with God. <laughs> In 1949, the age requirements were lowered to eight for Cub Scouts. And in 1982, Tiger Cubs were started, based on a shared leadership of boys and adults and their partner teams. And by 1986, Cub Scouts could register second grade boys. Cub Scouting in America is different from younger boy programs in other countries because it's centered on home and neighborhood. With the encouragement of families and leaders, boys enjoy activities that they can do on their own or with limited supervision. They are different from those that they will do in Boy Scouting. A strong influence from Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book remains today. The terms Law of the Pack, Akela, Wolf Cub, Den, and Pack all come from the Jungle Book. At the same time, gold, silver arrow points, we blow emblems, and the arrow of light emblem are taken from our American Indian heritage. Although scouting has changed over the years, the ideals and aims have remained the same. Character growth, citizenship training, and personal fitness. Scouting has been updated periodically through the years to keep pace with the changing world. It isn't the same as it was on Brown Sea Island in 1907. The ideals are still based on principles that Baden Powell had been taught as a boy. Baden Powell was amazed all his life that Scotting had such a worldwide appeal. He died in Nairi, Kenya in 1941. His grave is marked with a simple headstone that bears his name in a small circle with a dot in the middle. The symbol is the scout sign for I have gone home. After Baden Paul's death, a letter was found on his desk that had been written to all scouts, and it said, try and lead this world a little better than you found it. And with the help of God, 
That is what all scout leaders are trying to do. If you've been a scout, a boy scout, a cub scout, a varsity scout, a venture scout, if you are an eagle scout, please stand. If you have been a scout leader, please stand. If your organization sponsors a scout program, please stand. Our thanks to you all for what you do, for supporting scouts. You've influenced a lot of children in the world and a lot of people in the world. Our thanks to you all. No one who practices to see shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Psalm 101, verse 7. It's it, is loyal, it is a loyal thing you do when you render a service to friends, even though they are strangers to you. 3 John 1, verse 5. The scout is helpful. In all this I have given you an example that by such work we must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20, verse 35. He's got his friend. Some friends play at friendship, but true friends stick close to one's nearest kin. Proverbs 18, verse 24. He's got his courteous. Remind them to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle, and to show courtesy to everyone. Titus 3, verse 2. He showed his kind. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven. Ephesians 4, verse 32. So Jesus went back with them to Nazareth where he was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. Luke 2, verse 51. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. John 16, verse 33. Precious treasures remain in the house of the wise, but the fool devours it. Proverbs 21, verse 20. Be strong and of good courage. 1 Chronicles 28, verse 20. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts. Psalm 24, verse 3. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Micah 6, verse 8. Thank you. <coughs>